So good morning and welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today I am joined by Adam Harris, who is now a Kiwi, but originally from the UK like myself. And we actually met because um, Adam was on a similar kind of EOS journey to myself, and he'll tell you that story. Um, but he moved to New Zealand for a very specific reason, so he'll tell you that as well. Adam, welcome to the show. Lovely to have you on board. Thank you. Great to be here. Yeah. So you have a really interesting story, don't you? Because you kind of uncovered EOS and got involved with that. And then it led to you actually moving to this side of the world. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that story? Yeah. So I've been a leadership coach, consultant, facilitator, you know, um, all those kind of buzzwords. Predominantly, um, I challenge people and create space and environment for them to grow themselves and their organisations. Uh, one of my uh, clients, this is going back now, probably about eight years, had come across Traction. Um, I'd been coaching him as the CEO and also the senior leadership team. And he said, we've tried lots of different things. And actually, we feel as if we want to move forward with, with EOS. I'm like, what the heck is EOS? And that was before the book came out. <laughs> um, and he said, look, just read the book and tell me what I think. And I was like, Wow. Um, I'd, I'd written and published uh, my book by that point, The Check-In Strategy Journal, and I just kind of looked at EOS and went, oh, my God, this is just, A, it's the simplicity of it that I loved. The second thing is that it was a, the ability to be able to um, dilute and change the whole organisation. So I think a lot of the times is the, the language and the speak is very high level, but to get kind of, you know, Joe in uh, in the warehouse to be able to understand the terminology and the methodology. I think there's always been a bit of a challenge. Yeah. Um, and then kind of the, the third thing was, it was the consistency, uh, the cadence of meetings, the accountability, et cetera. So I was like, look, if you want me to help you facilitate, uh, I'm more than happy to do so. So I was learning on the fly. Absolutely love it. It helped me uh, develop as a coach and as a facilitator. Um, so that kind of then uh, started a journey of just, you know, as often as I do, um, I, I kind of got a big, I've always had a big tool bag and I'd be sitting with clients go, look, I'm not sure if you're interested, but I've just done EOS. What's EOS? And then you go down the story. And then, so in, all, in total over the years, I, I've helped implement about 25 different companies. Um, <clears throat> in one of those companies, uh, a, a, a former coachee of mine, was really interested in kind of doing EOS and everything. And she said, look, you know, I'm really thinking about being an EOS implementer. I was like, cool, go for it, go through the training. She says, but I need a company to kind of do a bit of a test bed with. I'm like, hands up, somebody offering to give me some support and help. So um, we as a business uh, went through the process. And when we were kind of looking down and setting the 10 year vision, one of the things that we decided was as a, as a, as a family and um one of kind of our overarching things is the the business is the business of the family so everything that we do is about creating the uh, the money and the opportunity to stretch our to stretch ourselves yep. so we set ourselves the 10 year vision of uh, leading a nomadic life that kind of sat on a bit on the back burner and um at the time my daughters were um uh, 11 and 7 and we kind of got to the stage where we decided that we wanted to try and do something new. And we were actually looking at the south of England um, at kind of a Montessori or a Steiner methodology of education. Both myself and my wife are educators. Um, and that's kind of fortuitously how we then started kind of the New Zealand journey. So I saw some flights come up. Uh, so I hadn't, I've got family up in Whangaparoa, Um about an hour north of Auckland. So I hadn't seen them for a while. These flights come up. We came over uh, at Christmas time, leaving Christmas day. Um, and then while we were there, we kind of remembered why we were looking at moving to New Zealand. We nearly did about eight years ago before my wife got cancer. Um, some more flights came up. I was like, mm, okay, well, let's book a flight for, you know, for my wife and my eldest to come back and look at the schools. And then in between, we then found out about the green school. Uh, which is uh, here down in New Plymouth, um, very much around experiential learning. Um, and it was like kind of, you know, the universe kind of just plays and gives you these things. And then we finally moved here December 19. Wow. Um, so, um, yeah, 
very EOS has been a big part of my life. Yeah, I can see that. And so how are you finding it in New Plymouth? Um, it's quite different to what I'm used to. Um, <laughs> uh, I was only saying the other day, I don't really spend much time in traffic, yep. um, which uh, probably shouldn't tell too many Aucklanders that. Um, uh, so, yeah, we're, we're quite far out of the way. We're not a throughput town. So you've really got to, there's got to be a reason and a decision you want to get here, which in some ways kind of leads us to be kind of a really best kept secret. Mm -hmm. um, life here is, I mean, you know, five minutes down to the beach, never lived uh, by the water before. So I'm really loving and enjoying that. Um, it's been challenging. So I think the aspect of, you know, with anything new comes excitement and anticipation. And then kind of when that's kind of settled down, yeah. There's kind of almost this realisation of, oh, OK, uh, I've got a sense of loneliness and isolation. And that's been kind of exasperated through the pandemic and kind of just navigating through uh, new and different thoughts and relationships, et cetera. Whilst it's been challenging, um, there's also been an aspect of kind of leaning into that from a growth area perspective. Yeah. And I know you've got some great clients down there that you're working with now. Um, what is it like from a business perspective in New Plymouth? Uh, interesting. Uh, I found culturally business in New Zealand um, different. Um, and, you know, we were talking before we hit the record button that yeah. whilst the language uh, verbally is the same as that actually culturally is very, very different. Um, I had anticipated that it was going to take some time and effort to, to understand the nuances. Um, but it feels as if sometimes you've just got to start from ground zero. And I just kind of got to the stage of going, right, okay, look, I can only do, I, a, I can only be who I am. Yep. I can't pretend to be anybody else because everybody else is taken. <laughs> and then, or, you know, do what I do best, which is connect people, um, add value, and just spend a lot of time listening and asking the right questions at the right time. And, and what's happened over, you know, over the time since I've been here is you just build and things just kind of uh, germinate and grow. And then all of a sudden you kind of sit back and go, oh, OK, I, I wouldn't have done that a year ago. Not because I didn't want to, but maybe I wouldn't have necessarily been accepted. Yep. Um, and, you know, things then just start kind of happening. And. I'm, a, I'm an opportunist. I'm an entrepreneur. Yep. Um, you know, I, I see, you know, I see it from, I see it from the visionary perspective and I also see it from the integrator's perspective. Um, and that, that ability to kind of be able to do so, I think has always stood me in good stead um, to, to listen, observe and learn and adapt accordingly to the situations. And that's kind of so where so frank and fearless that's come, I assume, from that journey that you've been on while you've been here. Yeah. So um, my, my business for many years was called Fresh Mindset and, you know, very much about uh, twisting the kaleidoscope and allowing people to kind of have a different view and a different um, different perspective. Uh, uh, you know, part of that is around, you know, giving ourselves permission um, to, to go through that. I, I kind of. Yeah, I, what I found was for the first kind of nine to 12 months, I, I spent a lot of time listening and it wasn't necessarily just about being here in New Zealand. Actually, it was from kind of a, a global perspective, but then B from how I've been working and operating. And I kind of just got to the stage of kind of going, you know, there, there's a, I'm not necessarily being true to who I am. I need to speak up a little bit more. I need to be a, a bit more frank and fearless. And I'd started writing a book about five years ago called Frank and Fearless how to have focus, flow, and fun, specifically in the boardroom, but from a wider perspective around, we take things so seriously, yeah. and actually we're not having the right conversations with the right people at the right time, whether that be first and foremost with ourselves, second of all, internally, but actually as importantly from an external perspective. Um, and I was just finding that I was having a lot of conversations with people and just thought, you know what? Now's the right time to just kind of rebrand. Uh, and I wanted to, A, be able to differentiate me and, uh, and the people that work with me as to this is who we are and what we're about. So kind of the narrative, yep. but also from an aspect of qualification to kind of go, look, if you want to work with us, that's great. We are slightly different and a little bit uh, nuancy. 
Um, this is who we are and this is what we're about. If you want to engage, great. If you don't want to engage, even better. Yeah. Um, and actually that has, a, has allowed to ensure that the, the, we're having, we're having uh, great conversations with great people that want to move themselves and their, and their organisations forward. And that's all I want. I don't really want to waste time on um, navel gazing conversations. I think for me, you know, it's great to just have, you know, a really intellectual, challenging uh, co uh, conversations. So if I could be spending more time doing that and less time wastage, um, actually I've become more pro productive. That's really key, isn't it? It's, it's interesting because obviously in the EOS uh, way of doing things, we talk about the niche and what your target market is. And, and for a lot of people, they go down very much the whole, oh, well, they're this age or they're this sex or they're this industry. But in actual fact, a niche can come down to the way that people think and feel and um, how they behave. And I think that people seem to discount that a lot of the time and just go, well, you know, um, I need to pick a specific industry. I think it's very much about attitude. You know, oh. I've got an elephant sitting next to me for the same reason as you it's like if people look at the elephant and sort of think quite frankly what the fuck is she doing with an elephant they're probably not going to enjoy working with me <laughs> so um tell me a little bit more about you know, the you know the eos journey the stuff that you did with eos and what are the things that you really got out of that i know you said it was beautifully simple it was yeah. um, very much about getting people all on the same page and being able to work through the layers what are the kind of the key things that you found in the businesses you worked with yeah so and you know as i'm sitting there reflecting i'm wondering i'm wondering if one of the reasons why i got you know frank and fearless has become so prevalent is that actually you know it's interesting the elephant in the room how many times was i even before eos you know um my my challenging style yeah is I come at it from a, um, a word called carefrontational. It's a bit American and a bit cheesy, but there's an aspect of around, you know, as a facilitator, my role is to create the, the space and the container, yeah. but then be able to pick up on, pick up on the energy, pick up on the things that are not being said, mm -hmm. the subtleties that are around. And, and actually for me, um, EOS just actually just enhanced that a, a step further because the process married with my style. So what it allowed me to do is just to turn around and go, um, so Deborah, you don't believe that he gets it. <laughs> what, 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 what makes you say that? Well, just tell me more, just explain. So that the, the process that we were, that we were going through just allowed that kind of uh, enhancement. Um, and I, I just, I, I just was just finding that, you know, there's just, there's so much good stuff. There's so many good people. There's so many great companies that actually miss out because there's a level of, there's high levels of complacency. There's little levels. I don't even think it's just accountability. I think it's a lack of inertia. Um, you know, there's uh, uh, so many, so much assumptions that are being made. Um, and, and actually, you know, when you can walk away, as you, as I know that you do, and uh, and I do, is that when you walk away from an intervention with a with a client, and you go, "Fuck me, I added some value today." Yeah. You know, not not uh, not only you know, I, and I get a huge amount of buzz and energy from that. Yeah. You know, I, I, from a coaching perspective, I've always lived by the mantra that if I'm if I feel uncomfortable, I am playing in exactly the right space because I know that if I'm not prepared to go there then nobody else will. Yeah. And, and, and I, it's kind of like, you know, that's where I kind of get my kryptonite from <laughs> is that, and it, it's not about making people feel uncomfortable. It's just about having those right, right conversations. I think the other thing is, is that um, people hold on to members of staff and members of their team for far too long yeah. and taking or allowing and helping, you know, organizations and in individuals to understand those emotions and to, you know, understand, you know, I, I, and there's been times when I've had to be really blatant and kind of go, right, okay, get your wallet out on the table. And I will literally take cash out of somebody's wallet um, and go, look, you know, you, you would not accept this from me yeah. now. So why do you, why do you feel it's acceptable to allow one of your members of, of your staff to basically steal from you? I was wondering and, where you were going with that. I'm so pleased that we got to that. 
but it's true, so, though, right? Yeah, and it's oh, a really nice way of showing it. Yeah, uh, and I mean, there's, there's so much more. I mean, you know, uh, I, I would urge anybody that's listening to this to definitely be exploring, you know, um, the methodology around EOS, to be looking at the books, to be having conversations, you know, w- with you, because you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. Um, and actually, if you don't understand why you, uh, you know, as the entrepreneur or the business that exists, what's the point? Mm. You know, you've really got to, uh, you know, ascertain. And, you know, there's, I think there's so much, um, there's so much bullshit. And it's great to be on a podcast where I could just be a little bit free with my language. <laughs> um, but there, there's so much business bullshit that actually you need to understand. And, and EOS might be part of it. But if you're not spending the time, energy and effort in addressing the things that you really need to, yep. um, what is the point? You might as well just go and get a job with somebody else. And, and the chances are, if, if you know, you're good at what you do, so you're probably going to an organisation and earn a decent, decent salary. And that actually may well be the best thing for you. Mm-hmm. But at least have the honesty and the openness to explore it and then get to that conclusion. I love it. Yeah. So did you have any sort of favorite tools in EOS that you like to use? Uh, I, I, I love GWC, you know, do they get it? Do they want it? They've got the, the, the capacity. Um, I think it's a, it's a real true leveler. I think it completely strips away, um, you know, the, the emotion yep. and it really makes you look in the mirror and just go, look, you know, um, are we just being too nice? Yeah. And I think it's, I think it's, I think it's really easy to just be nice. Um, and 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 somebody, you know, years ago, I remember somebody selling way before kind of EOS is that the longer you hang on to somebody, knowing that it's the wrong decision, you're actually preventing them from actually doing what they need and what they're passionate about. What they love. So we we think that we're protecting them. And we think that we're doing the best thing for us because we don't want the confrontation uh, and we don't want to have the difficult conversation, but actually nobody's winning. And the, 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 you know, the sooner that we, uh, that we do it, the better it's going to be for, you know, for all parties. Yeah. Um, so I love, I love GWC. Um, I say, I also, one of the times that I actually did it with a, with a leadership team and explained we're going to do like a real time review and actually go around the room and talk about whether somebody GWC did it. There was just this looks of horror on their faces. It's like, what, what now? We're like actually in real time. It's like, yes, we are. And, you know, it was, people were very nervous about it. But in actual fact, some things came out of that that I think I've never, ever in the 35 years of that company being together, ever been discussed. And it was fabulous. And, you know, I think that when you have those conversations, then you can really start to move forward. Yeah. And and, and I think that for me, there's, there's a big part of that is about, um, in, you know, a large part of what EOS is about is about giving people the permission to be to be open, honest and vulnerable in theory, being frank and fearless. Yeah, because that they know that they can do so um, and they can do it without being shot down. Yes. Um, and, and actually, you know, having that level of, um, you know, confrontation is is good if it's done in the right. If it's coming from the right place. Yeah then what happens is, is the, the disagreement and, uh, and the uncertainty then creates opportunity mm-hmm. because then people go, well, actually, do you know what? Um, and I, I typically see it so many times in family businesses where the wrong people are leading the business, yeah. you know, just because they've got the, they've got the, the surname and there's other people. And, and the thing is, is that, you know, I, I think a lot of boards are really uh, naive to think that, the rest of the employees and the other stakeholders do not know. And then, you know, you kind of, and I'm sure, again, I'm sure you've seen this and there'll be numbers of people that will be listening to the podcast where uh, you kind of, we've just made this decision or this has happened and go, well, that should have been done years ago. And you're like, what? (laughs) And and people just, people just know it's kind of almost like the, the, the unwritten Mm -hmm. um, or the, you know, the unspoken. Um, And the more you can understand that, then, then the business begins to be a lot more healthy. Yeah. Um, and they're, you know, they're, they're talking about the right things instead of talking about the things that they feel that they should do because it's not controversial. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> love it. Okay, so GWC, definitely one of our favourites. Anything else that sort of stands out for you? Um, I, I, I love, I love, uh, um, I love Level 10. I think for me, the... 
the cadence of the weekly meeting in line with uh, what we're doing for the quarter and then for the for the year, the consistency is what creates, you know, uh, the traction. Uh, and, you know, when you think about it, it's so bloody simple. You know, the aspect of let's make sure that, you know, same time, same place, you know, uh, same day every single week. But then it's the it's the it's the the nuances about ensuring that we're talking about the right things at the right time, and you just the you know you start seeing very fast very quickly that we're getting we we're getting shit done, yeah. and, and actually people go oh you know um, if there if there was any resistance to kind of doing it is that you suddenly very very quickly see what begins to change and what begins to happen, mm-hmm. um, and, and actually. You know, part of that challenge is around about getting the wrong people out of the business. Um, so, you know, what's got you here is not necessarily going to get you where you want to get to. And it's about being being brave. I think one of the challenges is, is I find a lot of the times is that, um, you know, the entrepreneur, a lot of the times they're the bottleneck. Yeah. Um, so there's a huge amount of bravery that is kind of needed to kind of, you know, go through, you know, the process. And sometimes that you can see the, you know, the, the mirror being shone up in front of their face. And I'm sure like, you know, like me, you've seen um, businesses that retreat or entrepreneurs that retreat because actually the, you know, the light is being shone on them in the, and, and they don't actually like it. Yeah. Um, if they can get over themselves and they can put their ego to one side, and some can and some can't, is that what then comes off the back end of it is, is that you've got, um, you know, a far better business. You've got a far, um, far better, that's not the right English, far greater level of engagement. Yep. And actually you're doing a, a lot, a lot, uh, a lot better work, <laughs> a lot greater work yep. for the purpose or whatever it is that, and the reason why you exist. Yeah. Um, but that is part of the journey. It is interesting. I actually found out that the EOS light bulb, which I always assumed was like an idea light bulb, was actually about shining lights on issues and resolving issues once and for all. So that was an interesting little tidbit tip it there. Um, t- I, I forgot to ask you how I missed it at the beginning, like in terms of professional and personal best, what are the other things that you would share in terms of your life that you think are, you know, your professional and your personal best so far? OK, Um. So I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an opportunist. Uh, I see. I kind of I kind of liken it to kind of go. Um, I don't know if you remember the film Minority Report. Uh, I think it was an early '90s film. Tom Cruise, and he basically was had a whole load of digital displays, and he was pulling information in from various bits and pieces and connecting things together. That's kind of how my brain works. So when I'm when I'm sitting or I'm listening or I'm watching or I'm observing. I have this ability to naturally be able to connect things together and see things as op- opportunities. So where other people might be, oh, this isn't necessary, you know, oh, what's the point in doing this? I'm like, okay, this is going to take me one step closer towards what the bigger thing is. So oh, we used to have a business called uh, Airheads. So we used to supply inflatable extras to the TV and film industry. Um, so that took me to some pretty... Uh, amazing challenging different places yeah um i also used to be a professional lookalike did you I, yeah. I, i'd like to have to guess who it was <laughs> uh i won't put you through the pain and misery because he oh, was a de- he was a d-list celebrity he was married to liza minnelli um ah, okay I, yeah famously got beaten up by by her uh, allegedly um he was michael jackson's best friend and he was a, a world-renowned record producer most people won't know who he is, but those people that will, or they want to do a picture analysis, was a guy called was a guy called David Guest. Yes, I remember him well. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, you were so, a celebrity lookalike. It, well, yeah, he, um, he, he's dead now, unfortunately. Um, so there's not really much work for uh, for me. But again, that just kind of took me to. I didn't do a massive amount of work with that, um, but it gave me the chance and the opportunity to see differing things. And, uh, you know, for me, uh, what's been great over the years of having a portfolio career is things that I'll learn in one situation 
I'll then take into the next company or organization or coaching session that I'm doing. And that, that, that difference and that ability to be able to kind of interweave um, different situations. Uh, actually, again, that's kind of where my kind of kryptonite is. Yeah. Um, from a personal perspective, um, I think moving, move, you know, pretty much uh, selling up and moving across to New Zealand has got to be has got to be up there. Yeah. Um, what, and what's been interesting is, you know, since I kind of have now got the Frank and Phyllis brand, is I've kind of been leaning into that. So we went down to the South Island uh, earlier this year. And I ended up doing things that I would not normally do. So I'm not, I, I wouldn't say that I'm, I have a fear of heights or a phobia. I just, I really don't like heights. So, you know, kind of climbing a waterfall in, uh, in Lake Wanaka, um, you know, hanging off at, you know, 200 meters above the ground going, what the hell am I doing? But, you know, I kind of this, this mantra of kind of being frank and fearless and leaning into it and showing vulnerability with my two daughters um that's kind of all that's kind of become my new mantra is just kind of going look you know if you were unsafe you wouldn't be allowed to do it so get over that fact face the fear uh, and and lean into it to see where and how and what the growth aspects are going to be and as you said some fantastic things come out of that don't they so it's all oh. worthwhile doing here yeah. yeah okay so we're getting, we're getting close to the finish of the podcast in terms of three top tips because you've obviously lived a a fascinating life and i'm love i always love hearing more and more about it but what were your three top tips for business owners who perhaps you know feel like they might have hit a ceiling or they're kind of getting a bit stuck what would you say are the three things that you would share with them clarity creates confidence yep um <laughs> Yeah, I just, I, I just feel that, you know, human nature dictates that we, our bodies and our minds will take the, the path of least resistance, mm -hmm. okay? We're fundamentally lazy. So if people don't, and I include, you know, the business owner, but then also the, the members of the organisation, um, also kind of stakeholders, when people don't have clarity, their minds start wandering and they start going off into, into tangents and they start, you know, creating however many God knows different stories. <laughs> yes. So when you're able to give people clarity, it actually means that you put their, their mind at, at rest. So, you know, um, finding that out. Okay. So where are we heading as an organization? Where and what is it that I want right now? Communicate it through. Yeah. People then become self-assured. Uh, you know, I mean, in theory, it kind of goes back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You know, I, I feel safe. And if I feel safe, then I can do what's definitely needed. Uh, so definitely clarity creates confidence. Um, the other thing for me is uh, create the space, the environment where you're being challenged. Okay, so I, I believe that we all need to be challenged. And actually, it's about having our questions questioned and not necessarily our questions answered now um the the tool for that is going to be different from each individual from each individual so some people may well get that from listening to podcasts yeah some people may well get that from reading books or listening to books some people it may well be one-on-one -on -one coaching it might be mentoring it might be mastermind groups it might be eos where and what is it within your professional and personal life are you being challenged? Yeah. Um, and it may well be the case that actually you outgrow the, uh, the, the intervention that you've got to. Mm -hmm. So you kind of need, I, I kind of look at it, you need, to go, <clears throat> you need to be walking away or thinking, that's a really good question. So it's, it's topping any of the challenge that you're doing from an internal perspective. Yeah. When you get to that stage is that, you know, you are, you're now kind of working on self-limiting beliefs. You're working on self-actualization. You're in a different growth area mm -hmm. um, to being in, in, in the comfort zone. So that's the, that's the second thing. Yep. Um, the third thing, um, if it's not working in the boardroom, it's yeah. not working in the bedroom. Okay. It's not working in the bedroom. It's not working in the boardroom. Okay. So this was a, a phrase told to me by a good friend of mine called Nigel Risner. 
um, in the UK. And he's quite happy in being very controversial. He knows that, you know, just by saying the phrase, some people will get very offended. Yeah. The, the, the underlying aspect of what he's saying is life is life. Yep. And anything that is impacting you from a personal perspective is naturally going to be impacting you from a professional perspective and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Have the awareness of that and ensure that you are dealing with what you need to kind of deal with. And actually, as a, as a leader or as a business owner, um, you know, and you have to work out and decide what sort of leader you want to be. But you need to there needs to be a level of humility in the fact that somebody's not performing. Mm -hmm. What is it that's going on in their life, which is meaning that they're not performing? And, you know, if you're a humble leader and you're building relationships and, and rapport, actually how you support people when they're going through the bad times will actually mean that you will have far greater times. So I think there's, the, there's an aspect of uh, humility, um, humanize to professionalize. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, for a lot of the people that are listening to this podcast, we're in the business of people. It just so happens that we've got an output product or a service at the back end. Yeah. So, you know, from a cultural perspective, what's the culture that you want? What's the culture that you would love to, you know, to lead? You know, what, what's the legacy that you want to leave for the people that work for you? You know, these these are kind of soul searching questions. But I, I, I believe as a as a coach and, you know, in the fundamentals of that sit within EOS, they're absolutely fundamentally important because otherwise we just become transactional. And we're just, we're just like A and other business. Mm -hmm. um, I've started to do a lot of work um, with B corporations. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, the, the aspects of, um, you know, it's not just about, you know, the money on the bottom line and shareholder return. What are we doing for our people? What are we doing for the planet? And what, 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 why do we exist? Yeah. Um, so there's some similarities with, uh, with EOS. Love it. Hey, Adam, it's been an absolute pleasure as always. If people want to get in contact with you and have a conversation about being frank and fearless or any other things we've talked about, how would they get hold of you? Uh, so I've got the Frank and Fearless Leadership Podcast uh, yep. available on all uh, platforms. <laughs> um, uh, Frankandfearless.com um, or find me on LinkedIn, uh, Adam Harris. Um, and I often say to people, really have a look at the, the testimonials and the videos of what other people say about me, because that will give you an idea of, of who I am and what I'm about. Yeah. Um, and I'm a, I'm a connector. Uh, so, you know, I kind of work on the premises that if I don't know the answer, I'll know somebody that will. Yeah. And if I don't know somebody that will, I'll know somebody that can introduce me to somebody that can. <laughs> so. You and I have got a lot of similarities there, but hey, that's really fantastic. Thank you so, so much. Look forward to catching up again soon and yeah, enjoy the rest of your week. Fantastic. Hopefully we'll be in Auckland as well, face to face. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Thanks, Adam.